I'm Aaron from PhoneDog.com and it's another Android battle between two high-end Android smartphones on Verizon this time. The Samsung Galaxy S3, newcomer to Verizon, one of the last carriers to receive the device. It's packing a 1.5 gigahertz dual-core Snapdragon S4 CPU, an 8 megapixel camera, a 4.8 inch HD display, and more. And by many, it's considered to be the hottest smartphone on the market right now. Then you have the tried and true Motorola Droid Razor Max. And while the specs may be a little bit less with a 1.2 gigahertz dual-core TI OMAP processor and an 8 megapixel camera, a little bit smaller 4.3 inch display, it's got a gigantic 3,300 milliamp hour battery. Will the battery went out? Will the specs went out? We'll find out in the dogfight, but first, some love to Best Buy Mobile for hooking us up with phones like the GS3 and like the Droid Razor Max for use in our One Paul Bandit giveaway game, which we turn around and give to you on the site. When you go into Best Buy Mobile, you'll walk out working. They'll help you set up your email, your web, your contacts, your camera settings, your preferred display settings, and more. So when you walk out the door, you're good to go at Best Buy Mobile. Let's take a look. Samsung Galaxy S3, Droid Razor Max. Which one's the Android champ on Verizon? We'll find out in the dogfight, which rolls right now. So you've got two hot high-end Android smartphones here, both available on Verizon Wireless right now. One of those is the Samsung Galaxy S3, and it's available now in 16 and 32 gigabyte configurations in white as seen here and in blue 16 gigabyte 199.99 32 gigabyte 249.99 and specs wise you've got a decent configuration here it's a 1.5 gigahertz dual core snapdragon s4 cpu pre-installed in this a 4.8 inch super amoled hd display with pentile technology hd 720p 8 megapixel camera on the back with 1080p HD video recording, a front facing camera, 2100 milliamp hour non removable battery. So, a big benefit here for people who like swapping out their batteries. This is actually one of the few new Android devices with a non removable, or excuse me, with a removable battery. Forgive me for saying that. I should say 2100 milliamp hour removable battery. So, you can take that out and uh, switch your battery out as you see fit. 2100 milliamp hours, 4G LTE connectivity, global roaming capabilities and uh, Samsung's newest high-end smartphone. So the Galaxy S3 available now. Then you have the Motorola Droid Razor Max, and this has been one of the hottest, most popular devices at Verizon since it came out. It's an evolution of the Droid Razor, but the Max brings a giant battery onto the table, even though this one is a non-removable removable battery, rather. And when I say non-removable battery here, I actually mean it. It's got a 1.2 gigahertz dual core TI OMAP processor, a 4.3 inch display with 540 by 900 pixels, Super AMOLED advanced here, 8 megapixel camera on the back with 1080p HD video recording, a 3,300 milliamp hour battery. So this is a gigantic battery. And when this thing came out, Motorola said it would last 21.5 hours with uh, moderate use, and then of course things like GPS. If I remember right, forgive me for bu maybe butchering these specs, but I think it was like eight hours of continuous maps use, and like movies from Vegas to Los Angeles. So I know you could GPS from Vegas to Los Angeles, and you could use uh, maps, I think it was, just standard maps for eight hours, or something like that, movies for eight hours. The point being that you can do quite a lot with 3,300 milliamp hours of battery life. That said, Android 4.0, this thing rolled out with gingerbread, but has since been upgraded to Android 4.0, also known as Ice Cream Sandwich, with Motorola's new user interface, which is funny because, you know, Motorola used to be pretty resource heavy when it came to user interfaces. Their resources, or the user interface rather, was very heavy, very bulky. Remember Moto Blur, a lot of people didn't like it. Now, they're one of the ones that looks a lot like stock Android. So it's kind of a full turnaround from Motorola in comparison to some of these other ones that have always kind of been resource heavy and continue to be resource heavy even in the ice cream sandwich days. This one, going from Moto Blur, it's kind of a weird full scale change to say that going from Moto Blur to this one has the most you know, look and feel to stock ice cream sandwich out of all the user interfaces. That said, this one's running Android 4.0 as well with TouchWiz and they're calling it the Nature UX, although I haven't heard that officially. Uh, named that by the Samsung executives I've talked to. We'll just roll with it. TouchWiz Nature UX, and like I said, 2,100 milliamp hour battery versus 3,300 milliamp hour. So both are packing ice cream sandwich, and because they're both carrier-based versions, let's take a look at the apps that come pre-installed because you will see some Verizon applications. Out of the gate on the Galaxy S3, you've got Amazon Kindle, All Share Play, which is a Samsung thing, but you've got a couple of different things here. Guided Tours, which is Verizon. You've got Mobile Hotspot. Google Plus integration with Messenger, My Verizon Mobile, 
and we can scroll back through here. Visual voicemail for $2.99 monthly through Verizon, VZ Navigator, and more. Unfortunately, those applications can't be uninstalled, so if you don't need VZ Navigator, you're perfectly content using Google Maps. Unfortunately, you can't remove those on the Verizon version. Another thing I don't care about, and I've worked with all of the carrier versions of the Galaxy S3, with the exception of the US cellular version, and Verizon's is honestly, in a lot of ways, my least favorite. And I'll tell you why, one of the biggest things, I hate this Wi-Fi, this ongoing Wi-Fi notification. I started this with the HTC Droid Incredible 4G LTE. It has this pesky little Wi-Fi off notification in the top left-hand corner, and it stays in your menu. You can't remove it. It's so obnoxious, and it's one of those things, you know, they moved the share everything plan uh, stuff. I get the fact that they want people to use Wi-Fi. They want to encourage Wi-Fi use, or at least educate their customers on Wi-Fi use. That said, I'm, you know, and I feel like most customers are pretty smart as well. In today's smartphone world, they can access Wi-Fi if they want to. It shouldn't be an ongoing notification because I find myself being used to a standard notification bar and just clicking the first thing available, whereas here there have been countless times I've clicked Wi-Fi by accident. Also, another thing, it's programmed to remember Wi-Fi networks. So if I use Wi-Fi in my office, for example, even if my Wi-Fi is turned off as it is right now, if it detects I'm in the office, it'll bring up a not notification prompt that says, hey, we remember this Wi-Fi network. Uh, do you want to connect to it? Even with Wi-Fi off, very, very frustrating. It's kind of one of those things where you're like, hey, I can control my own device. Thanks very much. You don't get that over here, but you do get some Verizon pre-installed applications on this device as well. You get Vcast apps, you get Google Plus integration, GoToMeeting, guided tours. Let's see here. Mobile hotspot, My Verizon Mobile, Netflix, NFL Mobile. Get some Google stuff over here. Verizon Video, video calling, VZ Navigator, and, uh, and that's about it. Now you'll notice over here, apps and widgets are in this kind of the same place over here with a download shortcut, so you can see the applications I've downloaded. This is a shortcut to the Google Play Store, whereas that one's, like I said, is downloaded application. So we'll go back into apps. What I don't like about this one is much like stock Android, it scrolls automatically between all apps and widgets. I like to be able to scroll back and forth between my apps without having to worry about flipping over into widgets until I want to. But with this one, it does auto switch over into widgets when I click like that, you'll see it automatically rotates between the two, or I can just tap up top. But out of the gate, you do get some Samsung widgets, you do get some Motorola widgets over here. Ice Cream Sandwich brings in customizable widgets, not just on the Gmail, or on the Google side, rather, but also on the Motorola side and on the Samsung side. So we'll bring in, you know, for example, let's find, um, you know, let's just say weather, for example. That's a pretty common one. So we'll throw weather out here and put it on an empty home screen. Let's just find, let's just do it here, for example. And I should be able... This may not be a customizable one. It looks like it's not a customizable one. But with a lot of Motorola's, for example, I can come in here and find a specific Motorola widget. Or we'll just say Tasks. And I can come in here and I can customize the look and feel of Tasks as I see fit. So they've done a good job, and it, which is ironic because most of Samsung's and TouchWiz have been customizable in the past. That may have just been a bad example. Let's see what else I can find. Maybe Yahoo Finance will let me customize it. Let's see. There we go. Perfect. So I can customize and move that around as I see fit and go right back to the home screen. Seven home screens over here, I can pinch in to access all of those five home screens over here. Much again, much like stock Android on this one. And then of course the notifications bar. Back to that, you'll see Wi-Fi is obviously out of the picture because it's done here, but you get shortcuts to a lot of different useful tools like Bluetooth, GPS, mute, airplane mode, driving mode, and more. And then up here again, said it a million times, but more of a stock look and feel over here with the shortcut to settings, the closing it out and getting rid of all the notifications right there. And then, of course, I can clear by clicking right there also. But that's what they look like. Shortcuts to settings, just to give you an idea of how they look. You'll see wireless network stuff, device stuff. You'll see personal. And then system down here at the bottom. So all kind of organized the same way. But you'll notice some Motorola, kind of the Motorola look and feel here with the icons. And then with the toggles. Whereas over here, more of a Samsung look and feel with the toggles. So you'll notice if you're a stickler for details like I am, you'll notice that the U.S. version say off whereas the international version had a little circle for when it was off and then a little uh, straight line for when it was on. So the winner, you know, to me, when it comes to the Galaxy S3, the winner here is the software features that come on this device. So take a look here, for example, at Motion. You get a lot of different cool stuff that comes out of the gate. Motion activation is on. Direct call is one of my favorites. So I can turn direct call on, and then let's say I'm text messaging my mother, and I'm like, hey, hope you're well. Love to visit with you in a couple weeks. And let's just say all of a sudden I'm like, I really want to call her and tell her this stuff as opposed to texting. Well, when I'm in a text message interface, all I have to do is hold the phone up to my ear, and it auto-dials whoever that text message thread is for. So then Smart Alert is a huge one for me as well. Turn that one on to show you what it's like. And actually, I can just show you the tutorial so you see what it's like. Smart Alert, 
pick up the device, and it'll notify you of missed calls and messages, which is great because even though there's a notification line on this device, if you're like me, you get a lot of emails, you get a lot of text messages, a lot of phone calls, I don't even have to look over or turn the display on and waste battery life. I just have to pick it up and it vibrates once if I have anything. Other great ones, shake to update's always great, pan to move icon, those are always good, and then I always enjoy the screenshot option where I just pan my hand around and palm swipe and it captures it. Other cool ones, security, we'll go in here and take a look, lock screen options, you can set shortcuts on the home screen, information ticker, you can turn on the news, camera quick access, which I have turned on, just walking you through these really quickly here, press, turn the display to the side, and it activates the camera, and I can go back to where I was, let's go back here so you can see some more features in the settings, bam, security, and then lock screen options. Weather can be displayed as well, dual clock for when you're roaming, and then of course you can set commands like play alarm clock, or play music, or show me text messages, or boogie boogie boogie, and it'll automatically activate certain things. So I can set up a wake up command of my choice. Let's say I wanna check for missed calls. Well, my code for check for missed calls is boogie boogie boogie. It'll automatically check for missed calls, which are cool. So a lot of cool software features in this device, and I think Samsung did a good job because it's like taking it to the next level. Because honestly, outside of a user interface, there's not a whole lot you can do, you know, outside of the operating system. They've taken Android 4.0, kind of the core. They've developed some great features that are exclusive to the Galaxy S3. And I think you know when these ecosystems are getting so close like this, and you've got high-end device, high-end device the distinction's really gonna come in the software goodies when you got two devices that have very similar processors, very similar displays, very similar cameras, that's where you can really win. So out of the gate here, we'll take a look at text messaging. Load up both of these. Android 4.0 running over here, stock Motorola keyboard out of the gate, and you get swipe pre-installed as well. Over here, Samsung's keypad, though it is a new version of Samsung's keypad, and Google Voice, that's about it. So you can see swipe pre-installed here. If swipe's your thing, more power to you, it is not my thing. Hey there, how are you doing? As you can see right there, and then over here, you've got the option for swipe built directly, or swipe like option built directly into the Samsung keyboard. I shouldn't say it's swipe, but how are you doing? Let's try that again, doing. That's better. And so you've got that option built directly into the Samsung keyboard. Portrait to landscape transitions on both of these are reasonably fast. That said, you've got a 4.8 inch display over here. While it may be too big for some, it's pretty decent to hold in the hand thanks to the rounded edges. I don't find this one to be a hard device to hold like I do the Galaxy Note or some of these other ones. You know, 4.8 is definitely pushing it when it comes to screen size for a lot of people. But that said, I feel like this one's still very pocketable thanks to how thin and light it is. And then of course the rounded edges make it a little bit easier to hold as well, but still very easy to type on. The Samsung keypad, still not my favorite keyboard on the market by any means, but it's a definite improvement from the Galaxy S2 variants that we've seen over the past couple of years. How are you doing over here as well with Swipe? 